I'm gonna make this video about um, how Stripe and Adalo uh, talk together to allow you to create a marketplace um, that can host vendors and merchants uh, so that they can sell products and services. Um, couple of things. The first is um, connect with Stripe. So you wanna make sure that you have a Stripe account and a Connect account. Connect is a subset of Stripe. It's a product that um, uh, that facilitates payments and payouts for your platform. So you want to be a platform uh, and not just um, and not just a, a you know a website or a store that sells your own products. You want to make sure that your users can sell their own products. So that's what Connect does, and so make sure that you get a Stripe account. It's free and uh, on board uh, with connect which is also free so once you've done that we can go back into Adalo and we can drop the connect with stripe or stripe connect component just drop it in this is going to be part of your UI um, and um, so this is what your um, your users are gonna see. You can put text around it explaining what this is gonna do and that's gonna you know, take you to a different page and all that kind of stuff. But the gist of it is that uh, you need this button. And when you drop in this button, you yourself are going to be asked to log in and connect with Stripe. Because Adala wants to make sure that uh, you are in fact a uh, Stripe customer and you are connected with Stripe and you have the connect capability to uh, accept other vendors onto your own platform. So um, that's gonna take you to Stripe's page, you log in, um, sign up, whatever you need to do. And once you have connected, so once you have OAuth, the um, the um, uh, Stripe account uh, onto Adalo. You need two um, uh, you need two credentials. This is all test data, by the way. This is all test uh, credentials. So the way that you retrieve those, you go into your um, you go into your Stripe uh, dashboard. You go into settings, and then you go on the connect settings and all the way at the bottom you're gonna have a client ID again we're in test mode you wanna grab this copy it and put it into the stripe client ID then there's a secret key and you will find that under developers API keys you're gonna grab this and you're gonna put it into the secret key. Now there's another part actually that you need to um, uh, take care of and it's copying this grayed out URI. You just copy this link and you go into settings, connect settings, exactly where we were before um, you add your eye like so and you just paste it in here so we could have done it in one step um, so you are done on your end now remember this button is for your users to click on and um, and make sure that they are uh, Stripe customers so that we can then um, let them onto our platform um, and and um, you know allow them to create products and, and, and things like that and then Stripe will take care of the payment uh, portion so in order to do that we have to attach an account ID to each of our users and the way you do it is you want to have a field onto your users collection called Stripe account ID or whatever you want to call it but it's basically your Stripe account ID 
Um, and this is what it looks like. ACCT underscore and then um, a string of uh, numbers and letters. You don't want to end up like these because if you don't have an account ID, then you can't get paid. Then there's no there's no account. Um, so um, that's what's gonna happen if you go through the, the whole onboarding process and that URI um, is going to redirect uh, back into Adalo and, um, and you have a communication between uh, the two services. So this is where this part comes in as well, Stripe account ID. So this is not, this is a little bit confusing in the beginning because you might think that this is part of this. And so you're like, wait, I put my client ID, I put my secret key, and now I wanna put my Stripe account ID. This is actually not yours. This is the logged in users account ID that gets generated once from Stripe and it gets saved into your logged in users Stripe account ID. So once you go through that uh, onboarding process, uh, you're gonna you're gonna end up with with this. So if that's not clear, let me know. It's a little bit. There's a few moving parts, um, and being familiar with the with the Stripe uh, dashboard and Stripe products and API is what's gonna make it clearer. I don't recommend you uh, read the whole documentation. This is why we have uh, these sort of tools, uh, but I'm happy to explain further if this is not clear. So once you've done all that, your user is now ready to accept payments. So on the checkout level, on our payment page, there is another set of settings that we need to uh, take care of. And we want to drop in the payment component. Okay, just drop it in. I customized it. And once you tap on it, quite a bit of uh, fields pop up. First of all, we're happy to see that Stripe Connect is in fact active. So we, the platform, are, um, are good to go. Now we want to set up this component to um, accept the payment and send it to the correct uh, vendor, our user, and in the process, we can collect the fee if we want to. So, first off, Stripe payment. How much are you getting paid? What is the payment amount? This is gonna be dynamic to the current product price, okay? So obviously you would be browsing this uh, marketplace, you would be selecting a store, like a, I don't know, like a, a pet treats store. You go and you browse this store and you like the, I don't know, Halloween treats for dogs, select it. And that particular um, product is going to have um, their own price. So say it's five bucks, right? So current product price. Uh, currency. This is cool because you could have a drop down, right? Um, that um, allows you to select uh, the currency. I just you know put USD because I'm in the states. Uh, charge description. Similarly. This is the current product's name. So this is gonna show up on, um, on the uh, receipt or invoice um, uh, from Stripe. And you can, of course, use this, um, use this data to generate your own custom um, emails, um, uh, email receipts and stuff like that. Or even a success message, right? So thank you for purchasing Curtain product name. Thank you for purchasing uh, Halloween dog treats. The email field is what creates a customer record in Stripe. Again, you don't have to know uh, too much about the Stripe API, 
but it will create uh, an ID of CUS underscore and a string of numbers and letters. Um, so um, you want to create a field, uh, an input field that allows your um, your uh, new customer to put in their email so that you can actually send them a receipt to, to that. Uh, but this is gonna come in uh, handy on your um, on your on your dashboard on your uh, uh, on your uh, vendors uh, dashboard in Stripe because you're gonna see that this um, uh, this customer uh, has uh, kind of a human uh, readable uh, ID which is their email hopefully uh, and you can also use it for receipts and stuff like that. Uh, then the submit button is very interesting because you can uh, customize the text in it. I like to put in, even though it might be a little bit redundant in the experience, but I think it's uh, it's better to be on the side of safe. So you have a pay, uh, which is a static text, and then uh, I repeat the current product price. And it's really cool because Adalo gives you these uh, format options and um, currency is one of them. So you're always going to have the uh, the uh, currency uh, symbol uh, in front of it, or I think some currencies use it at the end of the of the number, and then you can select the currency type. Um, so that's that's really cool. Um, and then after the payment is successful, you can also do stuff such as um, you know send an email or create a record in your um, database that, that that goes into um, a table of um, you know transactions or receipts or whatever so you can do all kinds of stuff you can do um, like a send grid um, email notification all all these really cool dynamic processes that uh, uh, are, are uh, that span from the payment being successful you can generate I'm happy to talk about it I'm happy to uh, kind of uh, throw some ideas at you if you um, if you need some and this is really cool. The next field is marketplace. So marketplace um, is is basically um, the one that you want to make sure you get right, because uh, if you don't, payment might be unsuccessful, or money might go to the wrong person. So uh, the connected account ID is empty in my case because I'm going test mode. But if I were to do this for real, um, I will go into my magic text. And I'm going to current product, user, Stripe, account ID. This is where it's important to get that part right from the get-go. We want to save that, and um, and that's and that's how it's gonna um, that's how it's gonna know where to send that payment to that account. So make sure you got that right. It looks like this. And then the platform fee amount. Well, this is pretty self-explanatory, but it's cool because um, you know you could do stuff like um, you know put one, right? And this is probably a dollar for each transaction, right? Um, or you could put the way that I did it is to select the current product price times um, uh, uh, is that point to nine is that nine? Oh, zero nine uh, wait uh, anyway you can you can you can put percentages there uh, plus uh, 0 0.3 I think that's how they do it. I think it's like point two. I, I forgot how I did it but anyway you can you can make uh, custom formulas um, that allow you to take a percentage um, from from the um, from the individual product. So that's really cool because you're gonna see the transaction go into the um, into your uh, account, uh, and then the vendor is gonna see the net uh, revenue, uh, which is say ten dollars minus two point nine percent and thirty cents, which is Stripe, and then another percentage from you it can be five percent, ten percent, whatever. Uh, test mode, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, publishable key and secret key. Again, these are tests, and you retrieve them from developers. API keys, publishable key, secret key. Sneak them in there. Turn this on and off. It's a little bit buggy on on this level. So 
I should theoretically be able to keep this value as I showed you before, current product, user, right? And I wouldn't have to remove it um, on and off, but uh, uh, by basically toggling this on and off, right? So if you're in test mode, uh, but for some reason it hasn't been working, but that's okay. You can just, um, um, you know, just reactivate that, uh, that thing. So in other words, let's see. Uh, let me refresh this just for safety. Uh, looking for this user. This user has one product. We're going to put a Stripe's test uh, card, which is 16 numbers of uh, we put any future date and we can put a receipt to, I don't know, uh, my um, email.com and uh, it's successful. So if I were to go to my platform, I should be able to see um, logs here. So it's 10.53 and um, there were three uh, calls, token, customer, and charges. Um, the uh, customer, in fact, as I explained before, is this, my email. Um, and um, to be honest, this is actually the older version. The charges API is the older one. I think they use one that's called uh, payment intents now. So Adalo, you might want to look into this. So that's that. Uh, let's see if payments came through. Uh, yeah, so there's a succeeded uh, payment in here. And let's see if there's a, a charge. A Stripe processing fee. Um, so I'm not sure that we, um, I don't know, maybe this didn't um, work at this time. But you get the idea, and um, if you have any questions, let me know. We can hack it together. All right, I hope this helps.